You know, if you live in Northern California, actually, if you have read the gay press any time over the last 30 years, you probably have seen the work of our next guest, photojournalist Rick Earhart. How are you? Fine, fine. You know, I gave you 10 more years to the intro. I said well, you've been documenting it for 40 years. You've just been in San Francisco right. for 40 years. And it's about 30, I don't lose track. I have lost track, exactly. But it's a lot. It's about 30. It's enough to have a, you know, a really substantial body of work. Well, that's kind of what I want to talk okay. to you about. I mean, I remember when I came here in 86 and I saw your work. I've been here 30 years, so mm -hmm. actually we've, I've been seeing your work pretty much the entire yeah. part of your career. Just thought of that. Hmm. During all that time, what do you think is the most important photo you've ever taken? Hmm. Hmm. You know, the, 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 the Iwo Jima picture right. or I the don't girl know. with napalm picture. Well, you know, I've never had, I guess... Uh, a clear enough response to any particular photo that I could really claim that. There's a couple I think that were quite influential. The October 6, 1989 police sweep of the Castro. That had some fairly dramatic photos from that, that that have been republished quite a bit. And I think that that, I don't know what influence it had. I think certainly that incident and the photos that myself and others took and just you know, the persistence of the, the demonstrators to get some kind of justice from the police also had a big part with that. Um, I've, I've certainly taken photos of a lot of quite significant events, whether there's been one particular photo that kind of crystallized that. Mm -hmm. That's a little hard to say. Well, let's, let's then make that the question of the events you have photographed over the last three decades. What do you think were the most significant? And I don't necessarily mean even significant news-wise, but what were the ones that got you as a person? Well, I can think of right off, and it's appropriate because the, AIDS, the International AIDS Conference is in Durban as we speak. And the last time it was there, I forget exactly, 10, 12 years ago, but Mandela spoke. And they had it set up. His, he was in a chair with his interviewer, and it was like three inches off the floor. It wasn't like a separate stage. And the press people were, I was sitting on the floor in front of him. <laughs> and just to hear him speak and to be that close was, was very moving. You know, uh -huh. that was a highlight, certainly. Um, many of the actions, like in the, the ACT UP period, the resistance to, to the lack of government, you know, acknowledgement and action on that, those two were very dramatic and, and very moving and left a lasting impression on me, certainly in the, uh, just the roles that the different people play in these sorts of clashes on the street and such. Yeah, the BAR, the Bay Area Reporter, is your main gig at the moment. It you is. said you're semi-retired, but you and Jane Cleland still photograph for them. Yes. Another well-known photographer in uh, Northern California, Rink Photographs for Bay Times. You know, we've got two print publications for LGBT news. How do you make it as a photographer in the age of Facebook and Snapchat and all, all that stuff? Well, it's tough. It's never been easy. You know, uh -huh. particularly you know, a freelance news photographer or photojournalist is a rare breed. And I think it's it, to the credit to the, to the BAR that they've con you know, worked with the two of us consistently. Jane, too, has worked there for about 30 years. And that they have you know, continued their commitment to original photography, not using canned photography. And so the consistency of that has been e e absolutely essential as a freelancer in, in this city. So you think that we still need that photographic, I don't say gatekeeper, but that's what we used to call it in the old days in news. The person well, who says, this is news because the way I framed it tells a story that maybe someone with an iPhone can't. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've, for, it's a cliche, of course, of, of photos, you know, is worth a thousand words, but it's also very true. And I think a, a, a strong, dramatic photo that tells the story is what brings people to actually read the story. So photography, I think, is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let me ask another question, then not the most memorable, but what do you think was the the photo that you wished you had taken or been there to take that you did? Uh, the closing of Finocchio's, I missed that. You know, that was such a iconic landmark and so reflective of, of just the differences of how gay people have been viewed, you know, over the decades. So I was really sorry. I went once, when, before I was a photographer, as a graphic artist, worked for Kaiser Hospitals, and um, myself and some co-workers went. And I was just really sorry that I didn't know about that and that I missed yeah. the closing of Finocchio's. I mean, for, and for the uninitiated, Finocchio's was probably one of, if not the most famous venue for female impersonators. For decades. For decades. In North Beach there on, on Columbus Avenue. So I was really sorry I missed that. Um, 
I was out of town for some events that, that I'm sorry I missed um, after Governor Wilson vetoed is was it AB 101? AB 101. You know there was quite a dramatic clash and some broken windows and such like that at the state office building. Um, I'm sorry I missed that because uh, I, I was out of town. Have you ever been frightened during a shoot? Like, I, I, have you ever been in the middle of an event where you thought this is getting a little out of hand? I have my choice between getting yeah, the photo have, or getting the hell out I of have. here. I have. Uh, the Rodney King, and you know, to be honest, those, that fear has come from the police and not from the demonstrators. Um, but the Rodney King, sometimes around there, uh, the October 6th action I you know, referred to earlier when, when they you know, swept down through Castro Street, those were two times. Um, I was also in Burroughs Welcome, which has a facility at, in Burlingame, and this was early, pre-ACT UP, AIDS Action Pledge did an overnight march from the Castro down to Burlingame. And there I was assaulted by a highway patrolman who jabbed me with his nightstick, and it was super painful. And if you remember the incident where Dolores Huerta almost got killed for the yes. same action, I could realize what you know how that can really kill you. So what was the recourse? You're like, look, I got a press badge. You, you actually, the there chief of police no signed it. There was no recourse. Did you complain? That, I did not. I did not complain on that one. I did not. I don't know that I complained. Well, I haven't had that other, mm -hmm. I've been arrested once. This was at the federal building. Um, they had previous told people you can't stand there. It was a demonstration, I think, against El Salvador. I forget exactly. Uh, you can't stand there, and I hadn't heard it, so I come and you know, here these people were sitting down in front of the, of the door. Well, here's a beautiful spot to take a photo. So I step <laughs> over there and then immediately get arrested. Yeah. But they dropped all the charges. How, how much defense is that press badge? How important is it? I think it's quite important. You know, it's, it, it literally allows you only to ask permission to cross a police line or a fire line. Um, but in reality, it's used very broadly. Um, you can get into museums, you know, art, art museums for free generally, and it, it's used quite broadly. Uh, and it does give you a legitimacy that I think um, your own press pass does not. Mm -hmm. It does. So no, it, it is very useful. We've only got about a, a minute and a half left. I want to ask you, what do you think, even though you say you're semi-retired, but the times in which we, we live, I mean, Orlando, Baton Rouge, Dallas, Baton Rouge, Pride, Black Lives Matter, uh, is, is the need for this gatekeeper, this someone who edits an image even more important than ever? I mean, it seems like every day you turn your Facebook feed and you're met with some horrible visual reality. It's, it's true. You know, everyone's taking photographs these days, of course, which obviously has some very, you know, positive benefits. But the hardest part of, or one of the hardest parts of photography is editing. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're only as good as your best image. Right. And there is that need to sort through all of that because the visual overload is, is immense. Mm -hmm. And a trained eye, I think a journalistic eye, is, is essential, continues to be. All right. Is there anything coming up in the next few months you definitely don't want to miss? I mean, are you going to the Democratic convention? No, no, no. I've been to Actually, one. Actually, I'm sorry. I, I'm dating myself. By the time this airs, it'll be, be over. No. I've been, I've been to one convention each yeah. uh, in St. Paul and Los Angeles. And... They're kind of a waste of time in some <laughs> ways. Um, it's inter you know it's always curious to see for the first time, and uh, I have strong connections to Minnesota, so I went to the one in St. Paul and yeah. with friends and, and that the Sarah Palin convention. Well, hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of your work for years to come. I know you've got an I exhibit so. coming up next year at the, at the community yeah. center. So uh, at the we'll, Harvey Milk Photo Center in yeah. DuBose Park. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have you back on then. Well, thank you. Thanks so much. We've been speaking to Rick Gerharder. Thanks for tuning in. I'm David Perry. Ten percent the longest-running LGBT TV show in California history. Good night.